Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. I have some exciting news today. Um, I've decided to formally launch or share, I guess might be the right word for it, some of my libraries. A lot of people have been asking, can I have your Lightburn cut library or can I have your Lightburn art library? And well, it's not really that simple. I had some trouble with exporting the cut libraries, but I've got that figured out. <clears throat> Those are ready to share now. With the art libraries, well, I have about 220 of them. <laughs> Uh, it's not quite that easy just to share 220 libraries, some of them as big as 15 megabytes. But today I'm going to share with you some of those files. Now for you diode laser users, I'm going to have all of the CLB files for your cut library for 7 watt, 15 watt, and 20 watt, uh, any type of Chinese laser. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's Otor or Nege. This will be the cut and the engraved libraries for all three types of lasers. And you CO2 users can jump in here too because I'm also going to be sharing the art libraries. Anyone that has Lightburn can install the art libraries that I share. There's something else I wanted to mention too. Um, I'm a brand new channel as most of you are probably well aware and I've only been making these videos for a couple of weeks although I've been doing this for years. So I'm brand new to YouTube. Amazingly I've broken the 900 subscriber mark this week which completely blows my mind. I want to say thank you very much for that. All of my subscribers, I really appreciate it. And I've got almost 1,800 hours of watch time. And the next milestone is for YouTube is going to be the 4,000 hour watch hours. So I'd like to ask you a favor today. And you know, I do all of this for free and I'd like to just ask you to watch the video all the way through to the end. I'm going to have a lot of information in this video about these libraries and how to use them. And I would appreciate it if you watch it all the way to the end that's going to help me gain some watch hours and it's going to help you understand these libraries a little better and you'll see what I mean in just a few minutes. With all of that said, <laughs> you know I'm long-winded. Um, let's get started. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to get these you know as we go. So we're first thing we're going to do is start with what is an art library. Now a lot of people know that you know you've got this down here this library down here it's on a tab library art library now if you don't have these tabs down here all you have to do is come up here to window and check them see I have a check mark next to mine if you don't have those tabs down there you won't have the check mark just put the check mark there so li art library and library are the two that you have to check okay so the art library I'm gonna pull this out so we can see it a little bit better is a place where you keep all of your artwork and the biggest mistake that a lot of people make when they're using Lightburn is they don't save their artwork. For instance, you know, you go through the trouble of creating this wonderful graphic right here. And, <laughs> you're, you know, you may want to use that over and over again. So what you do is you just select it and you import the graphic from your work plane and it'll be saved into whatever folder, whatever library folder you have. And we'll cover that in a moment. So you just give it a name and save it. And it'll be there forever. You can just double click to bring it back out anytime on another project or whatever. Now, I forgot to mention also that you saw me moving this around. You can put this anywhere you want on your screen. When you're ready to put it back down here, you just wait until this screen turns blue and let it go. And it'll be a tab again. By the top bar, you pull it back out if you want to pull it out. We're going to pull it out just so that we can take a look at what's in here, get an idea of how to use it. Now, even if you're an experienced user and you know how to use it, stick with me on this because I'm going to show you some things in here that are going to be diff maybe different from your experience using it. To use anything that's in here, all you have to do is double click on it. And I'll give you an example. Uh, this is one that I just finished making. So I'll double click. And what this is, is see how it's labeled 2L Home Sweet Home. Okay. That means two layers. So there are two layers here. There's this layer and there's this layer. Now what you do with this file, it's really pretty simple. Um, you scale it to whatever size that you need. Let me get it all the way over on the work plane here and you scale it to whatever size that you need. So for instance, we'll drag over this one. Actually, we should be dragging over this one. This is the bigger one. So we'll drag over this one 
and you'll see that let me put this into inches up here you'll see that this is eight inches by seven inches okay the width is the widest point eight inches so let's say you wanted to make it 10 well you would scale both of them up at the same time and by doing that you do it as a percentage so we grab everything and here's the percentage what we would do is double click in here and scale it up by maybe let's say 20 percent so we'll say uh, 120 percent now we've scaled them both up proportionately at this point you don't want to do one and the other well, let's go back on to this one and you see it's almost 10 inches we'll scale it up just a little more but i'm just trying to give you an idea here um, you can figure this out as you go this bottom one as you can see the red line here is the cut the blue line is the etching let's say you had a piece of wood that was 10 inches that you wanted to engrave this on you would need two pieces of wood for this because it's two layers this bottom layer is going to cut out around here and this will all be engraved all the blue then this one will cut out separately there's actually two cutouts in here and this is made to cut everything out of the wood so I designed this to use on three millimeter plywood which will make it easy to cut and uh, this one will first cut out the little holes in the letters right there then it'll cut out the actual saying itself and if you look you see I left it attached in two places okay so this cutout will be attached easy to handle and then you take this cutout piece and you drop it onto here and you glue it in place and you have sort of like a three-dimensional piece which is a real nice plaque to make you know I mean these three-dimensional plaques are really interesting and I have some of them up to seven eight uh, nine layers and I'm gonna show you that in a minute but let me show you how this works once you've actually run the job and what you can do is you can take and pull this one off the work plane so that it's not on the work plane anymore set your 10 inch square piece of wood on the work bed and this is what you'll get this is the only thing that's going to burn once it finishes the engraving on the wood it's going to cut it out and then you say okay you run that job then you move this one off to the side and do the same thing once you're done you take and put the piece that you cut out onto the other one and you have your 3d effect and I think this looks really nice um, this is not a a long intricate design it took me I don't know an hour to do this um, but a lot of people don't have these fonts these fancy fonts so I'm gonna do a bunch of these as time goes on so that's how that works now the only thing that I caution is light burn doesn't um, save in the LB art files it does not save the cut order uh, on a file like this you have to analyze it and figure out how it should be cut well the first cut should be the blue so the blue should be on top this is the priority over here blue should be first okay if I right click on that you'll see that's the blue this should be last this is the red so you have to move that down to the bottom the green is the second cut Oh, actually the yellow is I'm sorry the yellow is the second cut so we have to move that up so now it will it will do this piece then it will do cut out these holes in the letters then it will cut out the letters themselves and finally it'll cut out the actual piece of wood and let me give you an idea now you're probably not going to do both of these at the same time unless you're making a plaque that's this size but let me give you an idea of how this would burn so now you'll see in the preview if we come all the way over here it'll start and let me turn on the traversal move so you see this it'll start right here and we're gonna hit play and you'll see that the laser is gonna burn in a circle that's called an offset fill and that's gonna save so much time um, you just have no idea oh, about an hour's worth of time doing this one piece right here it's going to do it in just a couple minutes rather than an hour now it's made the it's etched the line on the outside now it's gone over to the other one it's cut out the letters the centers of the letters and now it's cutting out the actual words themselves you see that
once it finishes with these words, then it's going to cut out that piece so that the whole thing drops out. And there you go. Now it's going to go cut out the other one so that that whole piece drops out if you ran this one job at the same time. And now all you do is put the two together. So th there's going to be a lot of graphics like this that you'll find in the artwork, as well as there'll be a lot of other things like, for instance, animals. Now, this is actually um, a drawing that I did. I took a picture of a friend's cat, and I just had the best picture you could imagine. You can see it right here. And all I did was go in and put some more hair on it and some extra hair because I did a trace of the picture. And I just did the whiskers and the fur and things like that. But this is a beautiful etching. It's, it, it's going to come out really super nice. And this is just one of them. The only thing you have to be careful for is that not everything is grouped. So I have lots of really detailed, finely detailed animals. And here's an example. And take a look at this. Who wouldn't appreciate having an engraving that looks like this? I know I certainly would. Well, I drew it, so I know I would. <laughs> All right. Uh, there, there's just tons and tons of animals. Right now I've got animals, I've got fishing, I've got cartoons uh, uploaded, ready for download. But there are some other things here too. Back in the DXF files, um, I have all types of layered stuff in here. And I want to show you something really quickly that you're going to really enjoy. Now, whether or not you're a Christian or whatever, it makes no difference, okay? I just want to show you this for an example of how these files work. So this is a DXF that I created. There are eight different layers to this. And I always go from bottom to top. Now, you can't see it right now, but there is a face in here. <laughs> and let me show, you, show it to you. So now this is the first layer right here. Now, you see how that's not grouped? Okay, so you have to be careful because all of these are cut out in different pieces. So you would take the one next to it and drag that one until it snaps on top. Now, you see what happened there? Then you would take the next one going backwards and you would drop that one on top and then you would take the next one and drop this one on top now this is when you're assembling it okay you're gonna cut out all of these individually and then you'll take this one drop this one on top and we need to zoom in just a little further to get it to snap and there it goes now you see all of a sudden the picture appears and we have three more to go so we're gonna grab this one drop this one in place so the best thing to do is to zoom in when you're doing this when you're dropping it on top and then we drop this one on top wait till you see the preview um, you're gonna be amazed and then we take the final one zoom back in drop this on top and everything snaps into place well you're you're not going to really see it in the preview because uh, in the preview it's it's going to show you you have to zoom way in to see it but this is what you're going to get this is going to be the final product and it's going to be eight layers thick so 21 millimeters this is a prize piece that anyone would any christian would be happy to hang on their wall these are the type of DXF files that you're going to find in here. So I'm just going to get rid of all of these to get back back to here. And there, there's a ton of them. And I'll be uploading these shortly. These aren't currently available because some of them I'm still working on. But uh, there are a ton of them. And here's another example. This is just a cutout. And this is one that I'm doing for a family. Uh, this one won't be included uh, in the download, but I'm doing this for a local family. And what this is going to be, this will be the backing board up here. And I'm cutting out all of these individually and putting them on top. So the backing board is going to be a one inch board, one inch thick board. 
and all of these are going to be cut out of nine millimeter wood and then they'll be glued on top the backing is going to be farmhouse whitewashed color and the letters are going to be painted black so some of them are like really simple to use and others are not let's get to the ones that i have uploaded already there's 15 megabytes of files in here if we click on any one they're all different types and they're all super high quality you're not going to find these anywhere else i do a lot of a lot of this is compiled work that i've done over the years others are things that i've created to sell online and i do have a lot of my work with several different online vector sales websites but i'm not going to be charging you guys for the light burn version so we'll go, go ahead and get rid of that one but I just wanted to show you that there's a lot of really um, detailed stuff in here. Lots and lots of sayings. Daddy loves me more, more than fishing. There, there's just all kinds of different sayings and stuff in here. There's even shadow people, which I kind of like, you know, putting on a lot of designs. So there's the art library. And this is going to be available, or actually some of them are already available for download. And I'll get to that in just a little bit. I'm hoping that you'll see this video through, watch it, and give me those watch hours, as well as learn how to use everything here. So now this is the cut library. I'm going to drag this one out. This one you'll see is for the Ortur 20 watt. This can be used on any 20 watt laser. Any Chinese 20 watt laser or anyone using Lightburn for that matter can use Lightburn uh, cut library with a diode laser, any diode laser. So in here you'll see all of these are different materials for your particular laser. Now I have 7, 15, and 20 watt versions of this available for download. And over here you'll see that when I expand this you'll see no thickness and then thickness. So as I expand those, you'll see that here is a cut and engrave. Now, let's actually use this. I'm going to put this back over here. And I'm going to take and draw out a square or a rectangle, I guess. <laughs> now, up here, you'll see that this is set to fill at 150 and 85. So if we come down here and we come to the this section here, we want to engrave. We come over here to assign to layer and I want you to watch what happens right here when I click that button. So here we go. Click. You see how that changed? This is an engrave. You can change this to whatever you want, but that's how you assign it to the layer. Now, if for instance, if you were using cardboard as an example, cardboard doesn't make a difference what thickness it is. So uh, actually on the cut it does. So on the cut, let's say we're going to cut cardboard. I'm going to click this again and watch this up here. When I assign that to the layer, it went to 300 speed, 100 power. And that is the setting for the Ortor 20 watt, or any 20 watt for that matter. And all you have all these different settings in here. All you have to do is assign them to a layer, whether you want to cut or you want to engrave. That's pretty much the only two choices. To get this, what you have to do, you have to click the button that says load. And that will bring you to the area where you have your cut libraries and then you just double click it so if by chance I were to switch lasers let's say I had two lasers I had a 20 watt and I had a 15 this is not applicable for the 15 watt what I would do is click on load and I would come over here to the 15 watt and all of a sudden boom there we go 15 watt and all of the settings have now changed. So I can load any one that I want here. And it's as simple as that. Now going back to the art library. Let me do something real quick just to show you. I'm just going to get rid of my entire library. Okay, I'm going to unload all of them. So now I'm starting from scratch. And this is you. You've gotten the download. And now you need to know how to use it. Well, this is how you use it. You click load. It will take you to... The folder um, I give you an example of how to set up your folder system so that it brings you right directly to it and you just click whatever one you want so now I just brought in all of the animals if I wanted to bring something else in I come back to load again and I'll come down here to fishing and now we have all of our fishing in here and you see how this works you just have to load them as you download the different libraries You'll save them to the same folder. I have instructions on a website. 
that's going to tell you how to set up the folder hierarchy so that this is very simple and so easy to use along with the downloads. So I'm going to load another one and I'm just going to go to the DXF. You just double click it and in they come. Now you'll find all kinds of things in here. Let me show you something slightly different. I have this file here that is earrings. For instance, you, you want to make earrings. Well, here's a whole bunch of different styles of earrings that you can make from Dreamcatcher earrings to dancing girls to flowers, snowflakes, all these different things. Now you notice that this is grouped. All you have to do here is ungroup it and then select the earring that you want. So now to select it, I always zoom in and I always drag from the left because from the left you have to select the whole item. All right. So if I select that, it gets the whole item. If I, if, and if I drag from the right, you have to be very careful not to touch anything else because if you do, it'll select both of them. So that's why I drag from the left down to the right. I've got my earring. I can delete everything else. So now I can just drag up like so, hit the delete key, and everything else is gone, and I have my earring. At this point, it would be a great idea to group it up here. <laughs> so absolutely group that. Now, you, here's your size over here. Make it whatever size that you want. And you've got your earring. Now, notice that there's the groove here. And this is all set up. The only thing you have to do is go to your cuts and layers and assign it a layer. So we'll, and actually, no, we didn't want to group this one sorry because we didn't assign cuts and layers yet so if we come here we would assign this entire outside layer to a line cut so let's do something like that so that we can see it better and then we also need something else cut we need that cut out as well so we'll also assign that to a cut layer now you see this will get cut out and really this one should be put on a different layer because we need to set the priority and move it up so that this one cuts first and then this one cuts second. So this one cuts before this one. Okay. Now these we can set to fill like so. And there you have a beautiful earring. It's just so simple to use. Now, when you're done, when you delete it, it's still there. It's always going to be there. And there's going to be all kinds of other ones as well. For instance, here's dog earrings. All dog. You want to sell something? These are the ones to sell. Now, all of these, you have to look at the graphic and understand it. All of these are just going to be etched. If you picked one from here, let's ungroup it. And let's say we picked this one right here. And we brought this one out. That's not the only piece that you need here. So you see this one here? So this one goes behind that. So we'll drag this up. And if we zoom in, you'll see that this is the backing. And this is one side, two layers. So I would suggest you use one millimeter plywood for this. Or you could use anything. You could use 0.5 millimeter plastic for this. Or you could use very thin acrylic. This would be one side. You can put that on one side. And you can come over here and take this one out and cut out all three of these pieces right here. And of course, these would be engraved. You'd have to set your cuts and layers. This would be cut. This would be the first cut, the little one. This would be the second cut. And then over here, this would be it. We'd have to ungroup it. This would be a cut right here, the little hole. And this would be a cut. But the rest of this would all be engraving. That's just an idea an example of all of the different artwork that I'll be posting up on the website. And again, all of this is going to be for free. So what's the catch? You're saying you've got hundreds, well, probably thousands of hours into this. Well, here's the catch. I just started doing this publicly a few weeks ago, and I just started my YouTube channel. And I also started a forum and my own blog. 
Here uh, is my blog. This is lahobbyguy.com. And in here I post up blog posts. I post up video posts. I have a link to gadgets and supplies. They're all affiliate links and they help me to fund everything that I'm doing because I'm literally spending 50 hours a week lately doing all this. I appreciate it if you use those affiliate links. But here is where everything is going to be. Forums. If you click on forums, you'll come to my forum. Now here is where I have everything. You'll see members only files and downloads. Okay. You're not going to see this. <laughs> I just said you, you'll see members only file and downloads, but that's not the case. You won't see that. It won't be there. However, the only reason I see it is because if you look up here, I'm logged in. Up here, you're going to see log in or sign up. Okay, you're going to sign up. So only members can see this. Once you sign up for an account and you log in, then you'll be able to come in here and you'll see Lightburn Art Library Downloads, Lightburn Cut and Engrave Settings for Diode Laser. Now as a member you'll be able to access these two. And there's another category coming soon that's going to be Lightburn templates. And I have a bunch of different templates made up that you'll be able to download as well, free for use. I do have the copyright in here. So if you go to here, you'll see the notice, the copyright, and there's also uh, instructions here on folder hierarchy, how to create your folders. And this is really extremely important that you understand this and you know what I did skip this part up here the copyright on this is not to be sold distributed or used commercially without permission please don't distribute this to anyone else if you want to share it with someone tell them to come sign up for the forum they can get it themselves okay but I do have into intellectual property copyright on all this stuff this is going to explain to you how to exactly create those folders so that it would be really easy and how to load them and then the post down here are going to be the actual files. Um, this attached file is my animals LB art. What I want to say about this is you need to watch these version numbers. And I'll give you an example of something I just started doing. Over here, I just started adding this at the bottom today. I updated the fishing art library and I put this in here now. So you'll know that the file was updated to version 1.9 on 8-16-2021. So when you click this download, you're going to save it to the same place where your phishing.lbr is already been saved. And all you do is going to say, would you like to overwrite? And you just say yes. And all of a sudden you'll have the new phishing art library. Um, you should probably only do that when Lightburn is closed or it doesn't really matter. Once you close and reopen Lightburn, you'll get the new phishing art library. That is uh, important to know, but keep eye out for these version updates right here. Um, I plan on updating these like once a week to once every two weeks. As they grow, it's going to get, you know, harder and harder. But just keep checking back and look at the version. And uh, you might want to jot down what version you have or just look at the date. If you downloaded it last month, then you know that the update 8-16-2021, that's something new. You're going to want to download it again. So there you go. And then while you're here, you know, participate in the forums. Don't just come here for the downloads. Like uh, if you come over to the Hobby Laser forum, you know, th there's a lot of good stuff in here. And there's even some things in here like warnings. Here, here's a warning that tells you what you shouldn't, should and shouldn't be burning. Okay. And why you shouldn't be burning them. In here, for the Ortura users, you're going to see the advisories from Ortura. These advisories are going to tell you what problems uh, or tour is having with their machines and then the, there's regular chit chat i mean you can post anything that you want here in the hobby diode laser or anywhere on the board all you have to do is create a new topic if you want to ask a question or if you want a new topic created i suggest that you come to the main forums and there's a start here right there this will tell you some of the first few things there's a forum q and a i mean there you can post anything you want in here as well create a new topic it'll come down here you'll get an answer pretty quickly so there you go where do you get all this well it's right here at this website this is the website address you can just type in if it's easier to remember lahobbyguy.com that will bring you directly to my blog and from my blog you can just click the link that says forums and I do want to stress 
the the copyright and the sharing of these files. I don't want them to be blown up all over the internet. I'd rather it be a members only feature on my forum and I want to keep it that way and that's why I've I've got the intellectual copyright on them and I just ask that these are the terms of use. The terms of use is that you won't share it on the internet and I, I sincerely hope that you won't. So if you stuck with me through this whole <laughs> long old ordeal, I want to say thank you very much in helping to contribute to my watch hours. I really appreciate it and I'm showing my appreciation by offering these downloads to you, which is something I wanted to do anyway. And I've been working on it for some time now and y'all have been asking me for it. You asked for it, you got it. I mean, they're here, they're ready. All you have to do is sign up as a member and they're yours to keep. This is the only place you're going to find them, just as a last note. This is the only place you will find these. None of the Chinese manufacturers have taken the time to create CLB or LBR files. Some of the American and some of the European manufacturers of the CO2 lasers have. They distribute them with their lasers, but none of the Chinese manufacturers have. To them, it's all about profit. Uh, you know, I feel really happy to share all of this with you. I do have translations in Chinese on this YouTube video. If you're a Chinese manufacturer, please read the copyright. You would need to contact me before bundling these with any of your production models. So please pay attention to that copyright and feel free to contact me if you need anything. So I hope this video helped you out and I know that these files, these the cut library and the art library are going to help you out tremendously. And I'm glad you took the time to watch it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support and helping me reach almost a thousand subscribers in just a couple of weeks. I mean, that's incredible. I really appreciate y'all. I, I just can't express how much. Thank you so much for watching.